Christ is risen. As you know, we glorified the holy mirror-bearing women, which is why this, uh, this Sunday is called the mirror-bearing women. And in, in a way, today's gospel reminds us not to forget what have happened just two weeks ago. It reminds us to stay strong in our faith, to keep the same joy, to see, keep the same excitement that we had the Resurrection Sunday. On Holy Saturday, we mentioned that the mirror-bearing women were essentially the first ones to preach about the resurrection of Christ. And in this sense, we can deduct that they were the first apostles to the apostles themselves. And in the state of this excitement and amazement and for sure fear, the mirror-bearing women ran from the tomb of the Lord and at first, they were afraid to speak to anyone about this because what they heard from the angel was so unusual and so frightening. But as they were fleeing, he, him, he whom they wanted to anoint with fragrance mirror appeared to them. He appeared to them and said, one sentence you need not to be amazed the faithful mirror-bearing women immediately recognized savior who appeared to them and they joyfully worshiped him why such a joy one holy bishop says that the faithfulness to the truth and unfaithfulness are very sick very significant for a person Constant and firm faithfulness in everything is the opposite of faint-hearted unfaithfulness. So it was in this instance that the apostles, instead of following their teacher after he was arrested, scattered in different directions. And we remember who denied him three times. that the Lord had gone to Lazarus on Lazarus Saturday before Palm Sunday. The apostle Thomas said, let us go that we may die with him. And there was not one objection from the apostles. This means that they were in agreement with Thomas. They were ready to die for Christ, for truth. But instead of in the garden of Gethsemane, when Christ was arrested, they became frightened and they fled. Only one apostle resisted this fear and remained inseparably with Christ, even until Golgotha, where he stood along with Holy Theotokos. But the apostles fled. See how that unbelief and faith-heartedness darkened their eyes? The faithful mere barriers, however, who went with him to Golgotha, stood at the very cross, lamenting and at the same time trying to somehow lessen the terrible and supernatural sorrow of the Theotokos with their life of love and compassion. They did not leave her or Christ. We know from the gospel that how they buried him and that the mere bearing women watched where they laid Christ's body, but the apostles were not there. They fled. The the mirror-bearing women became so faithful to him until the very end. And therefore their conscience and inner 
feeling of spiritual intuition remained bright and pure, and therefore they immediately recognized Christ when he appeared to them. And without any doubt, they worshipped him as their beloved teacher and a victor over death. Just picture what the holy mirror bearer Mary Magdalene experienced as she, as she wept inconsolably at the tomb of him who freed her from unclean spirits and enemy powers, casting seven demons out of her. And after this happened, she became constant follower of Christ the teacher. And now, she, here she is weeping inconsolably at his tomb, and suddenly she hears the one who appeared to her with the voice, Mary, the dear and unforgettable voice by which seven demons had been once cast out of her. Same voice. I bet Mary was in bliss because the source of life was speaking to her, the Lord himself. Such a transition from inconsolable sorrow to complete ecstatic joy. So then let us remember what faithfulness and devotion means and what a pure conscience means. The holy women did everything they could to attend to their teacher. Not fearing any kind of danger, they went to Golgotha. They accompanied him. They stood at a cross. They observed, they watched how their teacher is piously buried. And for this, they have the joy of seeing before the apostles, Christ in his full glory, risen from the dead. We need to remember how important it is to be faithful to God. Faithfulness and devotion to God illumines the conscience of man and enlightens the mind of the person. And equally, when a man is repeatedly performing acts of unfaithfulness which betray the Lord and the truth, his soul becomes hardened and his conscience becomes coarse and dark. <coughs> and it's not easy for him to recognize the truth. And it's not easy for him even to worship or even choose to worship over the worldly activities. Marathon. Where are, where is everybody? Every one of us must remember this. And we always have to pray that the Lord will teach us to be faithful to him and always and in everything. And as the holy, glorious, mirror-bearing women very faithful to him. They preserved in their faithfulness until the very end, and they received an indescribable joy of seeing risen Christ, risen teacher, risen life source. What will Marathon do to those people? And immediately they worshipped Christ, and immediately they were strengthened by Him, and Him only. This example of their faithfulness and love must be instructive example for every Christian, so that by following it, a person can demonstrate faithfulness to the Lord until the end and receive everlasting joy in risen Christ. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen.